table tonight, and who the chat is like, bring the table down. So, we can let the ladies and the kids, amen? We can let them be first, amen? And at this time, I pray this down, so we get out of the way. Let them sit with these chairs won't be in the way.
you feel like making an effort to reach across the aisle, you can. If not, you don't have to. You can stick with your side. If, if you don't feel like stretching across the aisle. Amen. Amen. Everyone, just, uh, just close your eyes and let's just prepare our minds for what it is that God has for us today. One thing I prayed about uh, coming into this, I didn't pray as I usually do to, you know, God give me a word, what, what should I preach, but I just simply pray for what is my assignment for today. So that's why I said, you know, I, I, this, could, this could go in any direction because I'm not really sure where it's going to end up. I know where we're starting off, but where it's going to end up, only God can, can determine that, but... I just want us to lock hands as a church so that we can all be in agreement and all be on one accord. Not, you know, the preacher versus the members in the pew or the members in the pew versus the preacher, but so that we all be on one accord. And as well as you getting a word from God today, I pray I do the same as well. But I also wanted you to, to lock hands with the neighbor next and I want you to close your eyes because I want you to I want you to realize something. See. You know, some of us, we may be too young to understand this, but a lot of us have lived long enough to know what it feels like to be alone. You know what it feels like to look to your right, to your left, above you, beneath you, to the front, to the back, and you just simply can't find anybody to rely on. You can't find anybody to trust. You can't find anybody to call friend. You can't find nobody to call family. You can't find nobody to call a loved one. It just seems like time and time again, when you need people the most, you simply have a hard time finding just one person to talk to. That mother, that father, that, that sister, that brother who you feel like should be there. You feel like it's their right to be there. You feel like it's their duty to be there, and they're not. But what we have to realize is that when we connect hands with our fellow neighbor, it shows us that we're not alone. That the tears we cry, we're not the only ones crying. The hurt that we feel, we're not the only ones feeling it. The pain that we suffer, we're not the only ones suffering. But I don't want us to, to take on the mindset of sorrow and, and defeat. And I want us to realize that we're not just hanging on to somebody who's, who's in it with us. But the person that you touch, they qualify into a certain category. They, 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 they qualify as a person who has is a living testimony that the only reason that they're here today is 100% because of God. And if you ever find yourself in a situation that only God can do it and only God did do it and no man was involved, that's called a miracle. And I stand before you today letting you know that the person to your right, the person to your left, who you touch, they qualify as a miracle. If you ever wanted to know what a miracle felt like, just squeeze that person's hand next to you. Because just like you, they wasn't supposed to make it. Just like you, they were supposed to give up a long time ago. Just like you, they were supposed to throw in the towel. Just like you, they were supposed to commit suicide. Just like you, they should have been strung out. Just like you, they should have been homeless. Just like you, they should have been laid up in the hospital. Just like you, they have secrets that they scared to tell anybody. Just like you, they feel like they can't talk to not even the pastor, not even their mom, not even their dad. Just like you, they've gone through the same thing. The Bible even tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. Things have 
things they went through back in the Bible days. Things they went through back in slavery days. Things they went back through back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. People are still going through it. In 2014. But the beautiful thing about it is we can stand here together as a collective body and say, you know what? I may not be at that point where I can say I've made it, but I can definitely say I'm making it. I can definitely say I'm surviving this. I can definitely say that in this fight that I've been in, I've been slammed, I've been beat up, I've been punched. I, I, I've definitely been losing this fight. But one thing about a fight, no matter if you find yourself losing, as long as you haven't lost, you can continue to fight. In a boxing match, if a boxer gets knocked down, he still has a certain amount of time before he can get up, before he's considered the loser. And I'm here to tell somebody today, somebody in this place, along with myself, you you, 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 you have enough strength to, to, to at least say thank you, God, because you know what, God, these punches that I'm taking, Lord, they hurt. Lord, this, this, this beating that I'm taking, God, I, I, I've doubted myself and, I, and I've wondered, can, can I take it much longer, God? I've, I've wondered, can I really deal with this brutal punishment any much longer? But God, Lord, you showed me today, God, that was you, God. I may not have made it yet, God, but I'm making it. And as long as I keep on fighting, I know that one day I'll be able to stand at the top of that mountain with my hands held high, with my chin up, and with pride to be able to say, Lord, I finally made it. Lord, I finally reached it. Lord, I finally learned. Lord, I finally came out. Lord, I finally no longer am I just surviving life, but God, I'm now living life, God. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not just making it check to check, but God, I'm enjoying life, God. Lord, I, 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 I'm, I'm not just going back and forth, God, from my home to my job, and that's all my life consists of, God, but, but I, I've earned enough, God, where I can take a little vacation time, God, and I can, I can see more just what Tampa, Florida has to offer. I can see more than just what Florida has to offer, God, but I know you have many things for me to see, God. But Lord, I know I can't make it without you, God. And so as we go to you in prayer, Father, Lord, we just pray, God, that you just simply wipe our tears away. We pray, God, that you put a smile on our face, God. But most of all, God, we want to put a smile on your face, God. God, we want to make you smile, God. Lord, we want to live pleasing unto you, God. Lord, we want to continue, God, to do your work, God. We want to live out the purpose that you have for our lives, God. Lord, some of us in here, God, we've been classified as mistakes, God. We've been classified as illegitimate babies, God. Babies who wasn't supposed to be born. Babies who were supposed to be aborted. Babies who, who was not supposed to make it out of their mother's womb. But Lord, I stand firm believing on your word, God. That if you allow us to be here, God, then we can't be classified as a mistake because you have purpose for our lives, God. And so, Lord, we just say thank you today, God. We just say thank you for our purpose. We say thank you for our lives, God. We say thank you for continuing to keep us safe, God, even when we put ourselves in dangerous situations. We thank you, God, for healing us, even though we've done things that should have made us sick. Lord, we thank you, God, for, for allowing us to have financial blessings, God, even though we may have not had a job, God, we may have had the money and spent it unwisely, God, but you just continue to make a way time after time after time after time. And so, God, being that you continue to look out for us, God, even when we don't look out for ourselves, no let alone do we even honor you every day of our life. You still love us. You still care for us. And you still bless us anyhow. And so, Lord, I just thank you, God, for my assignment today, God. I thank you, God, for new beginnings assignment today, God. And I pray, God, that your will be done, God. Lord, I'm not looking for the loudest shout in church, God. I'm not looking, God, for the altar to be full, God, of people crying and, 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 and shedding tears because they're hurt, God, but I'm looking for deliverance, God. Lord, I'm looking, God, that when people leave out of this sanctuary, God, they're not going to just cry because that's what it made them do.
do in church and they go home and still have to deal with the same hell that they left this morning. God, I'm looking for a change, God. God, I'm looking for a change, God. Your people are looking for a change, God. Lord, we're not looking for just another word, God. We're not looking for just another song. We're not looking for just another church experience, but God... We're looking for a word that will set the captives free. And so, God, as we complete this prayer, God, we just stand firm, God, connected together, believing that whatever your will is for this day, it will be done. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, God. scriptures that we're going to be coming from. If you have a, a bookmark or a pen or just a good finger that you can slip in between two different passages of scripture, uh, that would be helpful. So the two scriptures that we have, first we're going to be coming from Psalm 96. And then also John chapter 11. St. John chapter 11. Right after the book of Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, Psalm 96. Psalm 96 and John chapter 11. Y'all sure know how to how to show up when I just happen to be preaching. I was hoping for, you know, a little less crowd, but you know. My God, I wasn't expecting this, you know. But I guess if I must, I must. Yes, sir. You must. Amen. Psalm 96 and John chapter 11. So Psalm 96, if you haven't said amen, amen. If you need a little more time, say wait on me. All right, Psalm 96, we're going to read the first verse. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And it simply says, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Now, I, I can't really tell you what David's angle was precisely when he wrote the 96th Psalm. I'm sure he was referring to some type of praise and worship, some type of little singing unto God and the old songs that you sing he's saying sing unto him new songs because when you sing unto him new songs it, it, it basically shows your new gratitude towards God it shows that you have a new appreciation for him every time you sing a new song for example if you had an artist who every CD they, they came out with had the exact same songs on it I'm pretty sure by the second album they put out you gonna stop buying it the owl. Okay. <laughs> so, you gonna stop buying the owl? Uh-huh. Now, on the other hand, maybe you will keep buying the owl because for some reason, people keep buying Jordans and he come out with the same ones over and over again, but we still buy it anyhow. 
I'm not really a Jordan person. I'm not sure how they classify those the numbers, you know, the ones and the twos coming out and the, you know, 0.50s or whatever the case may be. But at the same time, we still buy it. But in this particular situation, on Metanoia Sunday, we all know if you look at the back of the Metanoia shirt, it says to rethink. So don't, don't get caught up on the, you know, this difficult word here. Just look to the back and just see the example of rethink relationships, finances, so on and so forth. And so on this Metanoia Sunday, we want to reprogram our minds to be able to sing unto the Lord a new song. Because we constantly are going to God with the same old sorrow, singing the same old blues, you know, playing our harmonica, you know, our little guitar with our wine and our cigarette in each hand, singing the same old blues. And so we want to sing unto the Lord a new song. Now, my, uh, my main man, DJ Gene, who was obviously you know, early on my music. But that's all right, though. That's all right, but my, my main man, DJ Gene, he, he, he's basically going to help me out today because one thing that I discovered is that there are certain songs that we do sing that we have no problem with singing. Now, I have a little mixture. You know, I, I figure it's a pretty mixed church, so, you know, I got a little bit for everybody. But for... My, my rap lovers, uh, my new school, go ahead, Miss, I mean, uh, Deacon Jim. We. church and <laughs> act like, I mean, it's, I, I understand y'all made it get up and dance, but don't sit and act like you never heard that song before. I mean, I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't even listen to the radio and I heard that song before. I mean, so let's, let's, let's not, you know, let's not, let's not fake the funk, okay? At, at, at least, you know, you know, nod your head a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You know, drop the show. Do, do something. You know, I mean, don't, 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 don't make me look like I'm just the, you know, the only person listening to YG, my hip. You know, and, and I got the clean version. Now we could easily download it. You know, my, my Negro. You know, but, you know, some of y'all got your hitters in church with you today. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's not act like we don't know what our hitter is. DJ, not yet. Yeah, yeah, drop. Well, no, the same one. Same, same song. That's 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 the new school people who who like rap. You know, I I, I didn't know what would be everybody's favorite song, but I knew for a fact everybody knew that song. And it definitely has a nice beat. So then, but you also have your new school who likes a little more R&B type style. Don't act on that. There it is. There it is. There it is. Generation and I almost went straight from here straight to old school, but I, you know, I realized it's some people in here, you know, who, who, who was, who was good and grown in the '90s. But when I say good and grown, somebody you was in your '20s, you know, your, your prime of your life, you know, and you may have heard, you know, something like this. Younger people 
people, when they hear their song, they say, hey. When old people hear their song, they say, ah. It's like we, we got young and just dropped the H. That's all, you know. We came from ah to hey. And at the end of the day, we all throw that one hand up. And, and then, of course, for my, my season saints, you know, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't take you back to the, to the 50s or whatever, you know. I, I don't know that far back, but, but for my season saints, we do have... Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> out of God when we're still coming to him with the same old song and the same old thing. And so we're now jumping over to John chapter 11 and I have I would say quite a bit to read but I'm kind of skipping throughout so you just kind of have to follow me. I'm going to just be kind of skipping throughout it and then we'll just go from there. So we're in John chapter 11, and we're starting at verse number 1. All right? And so I'm going to read the verses first, and then we'll get started. All right? So we're going to start with uh, verse number 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the, the, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Skip down to verse 11. It says, These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Those of you who's in Bible study, y'all know where I'm going with that. Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Skip to verse 17. It says, Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Verse 18, Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Verse 19, And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Skip to verse 27. She said unto him, Yea, Yea, Lord, I, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. 28, and when she, had, when, she, when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. Verse 30, see down to verse 30. And look at somebody say, we're almost done. I know I'm reading a lot. Encourage your neighbor. Encourage your neighbor. Verse 30, it says, Now Jesus was not yet come into the town. 
but was in that place where Martha met him. Uh, skip to verse 32. Then Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. 34. And said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Skip down to verse 39. We got four more verses. Skip down to verse 39. It says, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Verse 40. Jesus said unto her, Said not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Verse 43 and, 40 and 44. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. In verse 44, and he that, that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said, saith unto them, loose him and let him go. Amen. I ain't did that much read since I was... And grade school. <clears throat> Amen. So, we all know the story of Lazarus. We know simply that Lazarus was sick, Lazarus died, Lazarus was in the grave. Jesus came and said, Lazarus, get up. Lazarus got up. He was alive. That's the basic story that we know of Lazarus. Okay, so, the title that we will come from today is Stop Burying Alive Things. Stop burying alive things. Amen. Amen. So if we look at verse number one in, in John chapter 11, where it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, her sister, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So basically, it is speaking specifically to who Mary was, Martha was, and who Lazarus was. But the significant thing that I find is, is that in chapter 11, verse number 2, it states that this is the same Mary that anoints Jesus' feet with oil and wipes it with her hair. Meaning that this is not his mother Mary, but this is the same Mary that does that. But if you flip over to chapter 12, verse number 3, it says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Now I'm thinking to myself, how is it that they describe who Mary is in chapter 11, but she didn't actually do it? It's in chapter 12. All right. Amen. How is it that I'm describing who this particular Mary is before she actually even did what makes it who she is? All right. And so what I come to grasp is that we have to realize is that it doesn't matter what people say about us. And we have to get this really implanted in our minds because you have to realize before you were even born, God already knew who you were. And who you were going to be, what you were going to do, what progress you were going to make, what you were going to accomplish, he already knew it before you actually did. And so just like Mary, he's able to speak and say, you so-and-so, you're going to be great at doing this. You so-and-so, you're going to be great at doing that, and you haven't even done it yet. And so when people look at you and they say, oh, man, you're going to be this great so-and-so, you look at them, you have a hard time believing it because nothing about your life lines up with being this great so-and-so, when in all reality, Mary had never been in a position where she was anointing Jesus' feet with expensive oil, but before she even did it, she was still able to be described as who she was going to be. Uh -huh. So, this particular Mary, this particular Martha, this particular Lazarus, this is all people who Jesus loved. And verse 3 says, you don't have to necessarily follow me, I'm just reading through just to reiterate where we're at. Verse 3 says, therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold... He whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that 
When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place. Now, maybe y'all are a little bit more saved than I am. But if I'm Lazarus, Mary, or Martha, I officially have a problem with Jesus at this particular time. I also have a, per a problem with the person who, who, who told me in church that if you just call on the name of Jesus, he'll show up. Yeah, yeah. Because Jesus got the news that Lazarus was sick. And he still stayed exactly where he was. Yeah. That's right. Jesus found out Lazarus had a problem and Jesus didn't move. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Mary, Mary and Martha, they sent word to Jesus, meaning in, in our terms, they prayed unto God saying, Lord, my brother's sick, I need you to heal him. Yeah. And God doesn't do anything. Right. And of course, that naturally makes us get to the place where now I'm a little disgusted with God because how in the world can I call on this almighty God and you don't even show up for me when I need you the most. You know, I, I called my mama, I mean, she, she at least picked up, she don't have the money to help me, but at least she answered the phone. You know, I called on my best friend, you know, they came over and, you know, and rubbed my back while I cried on their lap. You know, I, 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 I grabbed my bowl of ice cream, I washed my soap off, I did all this stuff to rehab it and, and, and they were therapeutically uh, getting me back to a, a sane state of mind. But when I call on this guy that everybody says, just call on him and he'll be there for you. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't even show up. Uh -huh. Like I told you, the same thing they went through back then, we deal with it today. So Jesus finds out that Lazarus is sick unto death. Meaning he, he don't have this shit common cold. Whatever Lazarus has, it's about to kill him. And Jesus still didn't move. And not only he stayed another hour or another day, he stayed a whole other two days. Verse number 11 says, these Thing said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Now, for those of you who are in Bible study, I don't have to explain this to you, but for the rest of you, we have to realize why Jesus considers Lazarus to be asleep. Jesus, we know, is, was raised from the dead. Lazarus, we assume he was raised from the dead, but the one who raised him only considered him to be asleep. So why is it that Lazarus is asleep, but Jesus was dead? The reason why Lazarus was asleep, because you have to remember, Lazarus was one that Jesus loved. And so and it even says in later scripture that anybody who believes in me shall never die, but have everlasting life. We know about everlasting life. And so Jesus knew for a fact that, yes, you may look at his physical body, and his physical body may be dead. But I'm telling you right now, he's only sleeping. I'm getting ready to go and wake him up out of this sleep that he's in. Because like I said beforehand, this sickness isn't unto death. It's just, it may cause you to go to sleep, but it's not unto death. Let's get to verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. So, Jesus gets the word that Lazarus was sick. He doesn't come to two days later. By the time he gets word, he realizes that Lazarus has been in the grave for four days. Now, I don't know how many mathematicians we have in here. But if you come and tell me something, and I've only known for two days, but by the time I get there, you've been in your suffering for four days, something is not adding up. Something is not making sense. Something is not telling me that you've only been in here for two days, but you've been in here uh, two extra days. So it leads me to believe that even before G I mean, before Lazarus got into the category of being asleep, they still had him in the grave. Even while Lazarus was alive, they still had him in the grave. We'll come back to that. And it says, now Bethany was nigh... Unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs. Realize that 15 furlongs is 200 meters. 200 meters is not even a whole mile. Jesus was less than a mile away from these people and still did not come. Mm. 
Jesus was less than a mile. He was close by. Now, whoever made that part of the song, though, they was right. You know, he, he stayed close by, but as far as him coming, he still didn't come. And many of the Jews came to Mary and Martha to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. So what, what this leads me to believe? And follow me. I, I know I'm taking a minute to get to my, 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 my point, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set it up the best way that I can. Like, I, don't, I don't have any notes or anything. I'm, I'm going with God on this one. Believe me. Um, but what I have to realize is Microphone cut off. I guess until I get another. Amen. Amen. And so what we have to realize is, is that Mary and Martha are in the house. Mary gets word that Jesus is on the way. I mean, Martha gets word that Jesus is on the way. Martha gets up and goes to meet Jesus. Mary stays right where she's at. And then Martha goes to Jesus and says, if you would have came, when we called you, my brother wouldn't have died. Now, as we read on in the story, it makes a lot of sense that Mary was the dominant factor in these two having the art that they had with Jesus. Because Martha got up and went to see Jesus and tried to say, you know, it, low key, this is what my sister's thinking. Like, you know, she's kind of disappointed in you because you should have came when we called you. But she didn't come with me. I just came by myself. But I'm letting you know, you know, Jesus, you kind of green because, you know, I said, Jesus, what's up? And you ain't, you ain't holler back at me. So now, now my brother is dead yeah. and now you want to come and try to fix a mess that has already been made. Uh-huh. Now you want to come and, and try to try to rekindle the flame, try to fix my broken family. Now you want to come and try to fix my situation when my, my situation has already blown up in my face. I've already dealt with the embarrassment. I've already dealt with the, with the shame. I've already dealt with, with, with the torture of what it is that I'm dealing with. But now that all hell is broken loose, now all of a sudden you want to show up. But you just Jesus that everybody speaks so highly of. You know, if my pastor wouldn't have showed up, I, I may have felt some kind of way, but at the end of the day, I realized he's a man. You know, I realized that the deacon or the elder or whoever didn't show up, you know, maybe they ran out of gas. Maybe something happened that they, they couldn't get here when they said they were going to be here. But Jesus, I look at you different than I look at everybody else. I got you. I got higher standards for you than I have for everybody else. How is it? That you have portrayed me just like man did. How is it that when, when, when I call on you, you do the exact same thing that man has done to me yeah, and came when you felt like it? Come on. And not when I called you. Yeah. And I'll let you know, I'm going to see your face. If you would have came, my brother wouldn't have died. Amen. If you would have showed up, my brother would still be living. You could have just easily healed him from his sickness, but now you have to try to perform a miracle and raise him from the dead because you didn't show up when I called you. And on top of all of that, you were less than a mile away. Yeah. You weren't you weren't somewhere far where I had to you know wait two days for a messenger to get back and forth. You were less than a mile away. Mm-hmm. Less than four laps around the track. Mm-hmm. And you still did what you felt like doing. And your name is Jesus. But then Jesus begins to speak and, 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 uh, and it says that, um, that uh, in that verse 19, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So they got their they, they, they friends, they got their healers with them comforted them in a time of their loss. But it says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard Jesus was coming, and went and met him, but Mary was sat still at the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. 
So now, Martha, she, she's praying that prayer. I don't know if y'all prayed before. This is my typical prayer most of the time when I'm dealing with something pretty heavy. You know, God, I know it didn't happen for me this time, but I know you're able to do it. See, we, 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 we use the terminology, he's able, as a grand old thing. But me, me being able to drive a car and me actually driving the car yeah. is two totally separate things. That's right, that's right. We even sing the song, God is able to do just what he said that he will do. So basically, we're saying that it's a chance that God may lie because he may say he will do it and he may be able to do it, but that don't mean he's necessarily going to do it. So she's basically saying, Lord, I know that even at this, this trying time, whatever it is that you pray unto your God, it can still happen. And then Jesus speaks and says, thy brother shall rise again. So what it is that Martha has a concern about, Jesus is giving an answer for. Listen. I know he wasn't there when I told the disciples that this sickness wasn't unto death. But I'm going to go ahead and let you know your brother will rise again. Yeah. So then we skip down to verse 27. It says, She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So now she said, You know what? I hear what you're saying, Lord, and I believe that you are all powerful. 28 says, And when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master is come and calling for thee. Let's stop right there for a second. I will give anybody in here $20 that I don't even have. If you show me in the scripture what Jesus said, tell Mary I said, come here. Y'all not going to at least look in your Bible and see if it's there? I could be lying. Y'all just take my word for it. He, she, she, she went and said, Mary, the, the master coming, and he called for you. Jesus, wanted, Jesus said, come here. That's what she's telling Mary. Who said, huh? What? She lied. Martha, I mean, Jesus never said, Martha, go get your sister and tell her I said, come here. All he simply said was, your brother will rise again. But because Martha is that friend that's instigating the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even really in the situation that deep, but it's going back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, so and so, and so she said she want to fight you. Yeah. Why she want to fight me? I don't know. I don't know. But she says she see you, you know, walking home from school, she's going to swing on you. So by the time you see her walking home from school, you so scared to get swung on, you swing on her. <laughs> now y'all fight. Now, then y'all get in front of the principal or whoever, and they say, why was y'all fighting? Because I heard that she wanted to fight me. And then she opened her mouth and say, I never said I wanted to fight you. Well, that's what so-and-so told me. And I'm telling you because I dealt with middle school kids, and I had to start suspending the so-and-so who said it, as opposed to the two that was fighting. Because I'm telling you, 100% of the time, they were never fighting for a real reason. And 95% of the time, they were actually friends with each other. It made sense to them. God bless them. But she is instigating the whole thing. So she says, Mary, the master said, come because he wants you. And verse 30 says, now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. So Jesus is still less than a mile away. And after all this that's going on, he still has not came to where Lazarus is. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, you take your time when you're going to leave. And then when you decide to leave, now you're dragging your feet. You know what, Jesus? Next time, I may not come to you with my problem. Because, I mean, Jesus, you're tripping. Like, I, I, I called you. You waited two days. Okay, I might can get over that. But now you're on your way. You know, you just... You just walk like your pants sagging or something. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Just taking your time. And Martha that came and met you, then went back and got married. And now Mary that made it to you. And you still not here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean you know, maybe not y'all. I'm a little offended at this yes, point. Yes, sir. I'm just telling you right now. As I'm reading this story, I'm a little offended. Because Jesus, 
I don't know what you got going on. I don't know whose agenda you on. I understand you may not come what you wanted to be there right on time, all that, but you know, you don't even like to try to make an effort to be there on time. Yes. You know, you feel like you woke up late, you just gonna be late to work anyway. You know what I'm saying? Y'all like that, like y'all, like, you know. Y'all already, you know, sift me on my song, so I know y'all not gonna admit to being late to work. You know. I I I've been, I've been late to work many a times. And I felt like I was already gonna be late. And so, verse 32 says, Then Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet saying, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? The instigator. Martha, she done went and just done spoiled the secret of how we really feel. I'm going to go say it to Jesus first to see what his reaction is. And then I go back and tell Mary, you know, he, Jesus ain't cussed me out, so, you know, he, he probably won't give you too hard of a time. So Mary tells how she really feels. And we know that Mary is the dominant factor in this, in this situation because she came, well, she didn't want to come at first, and when she finally came, it says, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping. So Mary is crying. Martha's not crying. Mary's crying. This is both of their brothers. And the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. So, Jesus sees Mary crying. Y'all bear with me. I'm, I'm almost to my point. Jesus sees Mary crying and, and the friends that she brought with her crying, and now he's messed up inside his spirit. Because Jesus is now thinking to himself, your sister Martha already came to talk to me. And I told her yeah, yeah. that your brother was going to get up. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're crying means that either she didn't relay the message to you yeah. or you don't believe right. what I said Amen. I was going to do. Yeah. Amen. And so I messed up in my spirit now because now I'm trying to figure out this person that I love, my, my people, where did you lose your faith? Mm -hmm. right. Where did we miss the mark? Somewhere down the line. I can understand if I took my time and still didn't give you an answer for your problem. I may not have shown up and fixed the problem, but I wrote you the prescription. Yeah. I told you what the end result's gonna be. But you still have the nerve to come to me crying, singing the same old song. Uh-huh. Sing, sing the same old sad song over and over again. Yeah. Your sister sung the song, Jesus, if you had come when we called you, my brother would still be alive. Mm -hmm. You come in and sing the exact same song and said, Jesus, if you would have came, my brother would still be alive. Mm -hmm. And so now, because I, I, I didn't got an encore of the first performance, from your sister. Now I'm messing with my spirit because y'all, y'all are my people. In the beginning of this of this text, it says, "Now a certain man named Lazarus." And anytime you consider a certain person, a certain person, that means that you're just not any ordinary body, but you're chosen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And that, that's a point right there that we need to realize that even though we're chosen, that don't mean that we're not going to deal with hard times. Yeah. Because Lazarus was chosen and was sick. Lazarus was chosen and experienced what they called death. Mary and Martha were specific people, but yet they still came to Jesus just as the world did, singing the same old song. Glory be to God. And so verse 34 says, and he and said, Jesus said, where have ye laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see him. So now, I need y'all to show me exactly. This is what Jesus said. I need y'all to show me exactly where it is that you completely lost faith in me. That thing that I already gave you a word about. Yeah. That thing that we already touched and agreed about. Yeah. Yeah. That thing when you came to the altar and I laid hands on you and you said, God said yeah. everything is going to be okay. God said you're going to get that job. God said your marriage is going to work out. God said your child is going to be healed. God said that what you've been praying for is going to happen. But yet, 
the same thing that God spoke life to, you put it in a grave. Yeah. The same thing that I told you wasn't dead in the first place. It's just resting. Mm -hmm. It's just sleeping. You still manage to bury it in a grave. Yes. And anything that we bury in a grave, we're burying it because we are now at a place that this particular life has no more value. Yeah. This particular life can no longer live on, and so now we're going to bury this thing and put it to rest for good. But we're trying to put things to rest for good that God already said is going to rise again. And the point that we're missing in this whole dynamic of God is, is that we come to church and we come to the altar and we go to prayer meeting, we do all this stuff, seeking for an answer from God. And once he gives us the answer and says, that thing is going to happen for you, something else may happen. Friends may speak in our ear. Siblings may speak in our ear. We have some type of instigation going on whether it's an actual person or a situation that makes us then believe, you know what? God, I heard what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the odds are stacked too much against me. I don't even seem like I qualify to be able to make it. I mean, I, I hear what you said. I heard you said I'm going to make it. But Lord, I'm starting to doubt what you said. Because it doesn't look like it can happen. When, when, when I go by what man Sanders is saying, say you got to be this big, you got to be this small, you got to be this fast, you got to be this tall, you got to be this smart, you got to be able to type this fast. When I hear all these things, and I know for a fact that I don't fit these qualifications, mm -hmm. you know what? God, I heard you, but let's go ahead and have this funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and bury this thing because you know what? I'd rather this thing be dead to me. They continue to act like it's living and it just haunt me for the rest of my life. But what we have to realize is, verse 39 says, Jesus said, take you away the stone. Because back then, you know, they, they, they buried people in a cave. Put you in a cave, put a stone in front of them. That was your grave. That was supposed to dig in six feet under. He said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time, he's stinking. For he has been dead four days. So she's basically saying to God that, Jesus, I, I, I see what you're trying to do. And I appreciate you trying to help. But this thing in my life that I've been praying for, it's been dead way too long. And by this time, it's not even worth trying to bring it back to life because it stinks. Because it's worthless. Because if I pull this thing out, you know what? It, 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 it might not be as valuable as it was when I first put it in. Because this thing has been dead in my life too long. This relationship has been dead to me too long. I'm having a hard time forgiving because this person has been dead to me for so long. I, I'm having a hard time trying again. I'm having a hard time chasing after my true passion in life because it's been dead to me too long. I didn't make it when I felt like I had the best chance that I could make it. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't enter into the, 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 the window of opportunity that was presented to me the first time. And so you know what? Lord, I, I appreciate you trying to step in and, and, and work a miracle for me, but you know what? At this point, I don't even want it no more. Because it's been dead too long and it stinks. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus speaks up and says, Said not unto thee, meaning didn't I say to you, that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. So even though she's trying to tell Jesus, Jesus, just don't, don't worry about it. You know, it has been dead too long. I don't even want to see my brother no more. He says, but didn't I already tell you yeah. that it was going to happen? Yeah. At, at, at this point, even though you're ready to give up, it doesn't matter because whatever I say yeah. has to come to pass. Right. So I, I, I no longer need the church to insult me and say, it, what God said he's going to do, he's able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if he said he's going to do it, right. it has no choice yeah, yeah, yeah. but to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, there is 
nothing, you, you, can, you can sit up and not even try. And it's still going to happen. If God says that you're going to become whatever it is, you can put no effort towards it. But it's still going to happen. Yeah. Because it came out of his mouth. And he said, listen, your brother, your brother's going to rise again. Jesus, you know what? We good. He stinks by now. He's been in there four days. I understand what you're saying. But hear me what I said. Your brother is going to rise again. Glory be to God. And so then verse 43, our last two verses says, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And you know, for a very long time, us as preachers, us as listeners, we used to end the story right there. Because we think that's the shouting point. That Jesus, oh, he called Lazarus out of the grave. He said, Lazarus, come forth, and he got up and walked. Yeah, that's, that's nice and dandy. That, that is a true statement. But realize this. Verse 44 says, And he that was dead came forth. But the next word says, Bound. Hand and foot with grave clothes on. And the reason why a lot of us in here is going to miss out on my blessings is because we're expecting that when it comes to us, it's going to be pretty. We're expecting that when that blessing gets to us, it's going to reach us in perfection. What we have to realize is, is that God is letting us know, I'm going to call that thing out the grave for you. But realize, when it comes out the grave, it's still going to have on grave clothes. It's still going to be bound. It's still going to be tied up. It's still going to be some last effort that has to be made before you can fully walk into the promises of God. Yes, See, we come to church and we, we stand before God and we say, God, make it happen. And then he makes it happen. But it just doesn't look as cute as we thought it should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it very well stinks just like we said it would after being dead for so long. Yeah. But realize in the latter part of verse 44, it says his face was bound about with a napkin. But Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Yeah. And what we have to realize, people of God, that even when Jesus gives us what it is we've been asking for, sometimes we still don't have to let it go. Sometimes we still going to have to loose it. Because if you take it in the form that it's in right now, it's not going to be in its proper formality. So I'm going to present you with that job. But if I tell you to let it go, you got to let it go. I'm going to present you with that relationship. But if I tell you, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. Because see, what we don't realize is a lot of times we look at loss and think that means that we're losing out on something. But when God tells you to let go of something, it's only simply because he has something better. Yeah. It may be uncomfortable, but I have something better for you. It, 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 you, you may worry about how your bills going to get paid, but I have something better for you. And not even better for you in the sense that it has to be something different. I can bring back to you the exact same thing I brought out of the grave. But when I bring it back, it's not going to be in grave clothes. Yeah. It's going to be in a tuxedo. It's going to be in a dress. It's going to be in the proper form that I said that you can have because I'm God and I said I want my people to have nothing but the best. But you have to realize something. That first of all, I'm going to allow it to rise. But even once it rises, I might tell you to let it go. Simply because it's something better for you. And so I come today speaking to every individual who's willing to hear what I have to say. To let you know that I am a product of somebody who had exactly what he wanted and had to let it go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Realize, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not preaching script, I'm talking about me. Yes, sir. I, I'm a living witness. The reason why I even live in Tampa, Florida right now yes, sir. is because I had things that I had to let go. I had a great job. Yes, no real responsibility. No wife, no kids, no nothing. 
had a great job that I could I could pay my rent and somebody else's and still have money left over. But God told me I had to let it go. I wasn't even at a job for a whole year. But I had to let it go. I knew it was the kids I was working with, they were going to be hurt by it. I knew I was going to be hurt by it. But I had to let it go. And do I know what the end of the result is? I have no idea. But one thing that I'm standing strong on today that I encourage everybody in here to stand firm on is that God has told me that that thing that I've been praying about is going to rise again. Realize, I gave you a complete story about biblical time, but right now I'm talking about somebody that you're looking at. This is nothing made up. God has told me to don't give up on what it is that I prayed him about because it's going to happen. Simply because he said it's going to happen. It now has no choice but to happen. It now has, it, 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 it's, it's nothing that, 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 can, that can come in the way between right now and it happening. And so right now, I just want us to simply rethink. Let to know your our minds that, you know what? No longer will I continue to sing the same old song. No longer will I continue to come to God and say, you know what, God? I know you can do it this time, but you're able. You told me you were going to do it, and you know what? That thing did kind of die out, but you're able. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray just enough where God doesn't feel like I'm offending him. But in all reality, I've kind of gave up hope. But right now, God is telling you, show me where you laid. That thing that you buried, that's still alive. Show me where you buried it. Take me to the grave site. Take, take me to the burial ground. And then once you get there, I need you to remove that gravestone. Grab that shovel and dig up that dirt. Lift that, that cast up and bring it on to the earth. I want you to open up that casket. And you're going to realize that that thing that you put in that casket and put in that ground is sitting there breathing and it's still alive. You had a funeral for something that's still living. It was just only sleeping. Delay doesn't mean denied. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen at all. From the youngest person to the oldest person, realize that that thing you've been praying about is still going to happen because God said it has to happen. But if you bury it while it's still alive, you're going to have to put in extra work digging it back up. When you could have just allowed it to just lay in bed and sleep until it was time for it to rise again. And so on today, I just want to challenge everyone in here to simply go to God, not as the instigator, not as the person singing the song saying, Lord, if you would have came, my situation would be different. Lord, if you would have came, my job would still be here. Lord, if you wouldn't have came, Lord, I wouldn't be filing for divorce. Lord, if you would have came, my baby wouldn't be going through what it's going through. Lord, if you would have came, I wouldn't be struggling like I'm struggling. Lord, if you would have come, the doctor couldn't have given you the bad report that he gave me. Lord, if you would have came, I wouldn't have made a mistake with the same person over and over again. Lord, if you would have come, I wouldn't be living in the state of being that I'm living right now. A lot of us have made decisions in life to choose to live certain ways and to do certain things and to give up on certain things simply because we may have said, God, I need you to come, and he didn't come right away. So now I'm in a situation where I buried that thing, God. You know what? It's been buried so long that I don't even want it no more. I don't even want to come out no more. But I'm here to tell you in my closing statements that Jesus is saying, did not tell you that it was going to happen. Now show me where you laid it. Let's bring it back to life. And live in the promises that I spoke over you even before you knew who you were. Yeah, amen. Start to live in the promises of who I spoke who you were even before your parents knew they were going to have you. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, 
I said you were going to be great. And God is telling us today that if you choose today to go dig up that thing that you buried, you no longer have to continue to, to come to church and try to leave with a better feeling or shed tears, a good, a good word that will that hold you over until you get to church next Sunday. You can start living your promises of God even Monday through Saturday. And Sunday will no longer be a place where I can come and get more inspiration, but I can simply just praise God for what he's done in my life. Let us stand to our feet all over the building. We normally, we normally want to lock hands and, and pray and see if there's anyone who wants to come to the altar for prayer or for salvation. And the opportunity for salvation, I, I definitely will present it. But before we get to that, I want us to take the preacher off the pedestal for just a second. Because Mary and Martha, even with their lack of faith, they didn't go try to find the priest. They went and found Jesus. I may have Jesus inside of me, but I'm not Jesus. I can pray for you about your situation, but just because I prayed or a pastor prayed, that's not going to be the determining fact that means it's going to happen. But we have to get to a place where we have to say, you know what? Pastor, I appreciate you. Preacher, I appreciate you, but I need you to step aside for just a second. I need my direct access to God. And so right now, we're getting ready to go into a, 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 a place where you know exactly what it is that you need. I can call out many things over the microphone. I can try to prophesy and do all these different things, but you know exactly yes. what it is that you buried, that God said was going to happen. And I just dare you in these next few moments to go to God for yourself yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and say, you know what, God, I'm not going to sing a song like Mary and Martha did and say, Lord, you should have showed up. But Lord, I'm going to say, let me show you where I lost my faith. Because, Lord, this is the place I need you to pick me up from, right here. Let me show you where I buried that thing. Because this is where I need help digging up that thing that I buried that's still alive. And so for the next few moments, I don't care what form of fashion you do. I don't need anybody who knows the proper church protocol. I don't need everybody in here, if you don't want to, to yell to the top of your lungs. You don't have to shout to the top of your lungs. You don't have to shed a tear. You don't have to run up here. You don't have to run around the sanctuary. Whatever form and fashion you feel like you'll get God's attention for this thing that you're dealing with, I want it to take place right now. Because, see, realize, don't, don't take this opportunity lightly. Don't, don't just listen to me because I'm talking on the microphone. You can, you can excuse what I'm saying right now. Go to God for yourself. Go on to God for yourself and say, God, I know I came to you before. But, Lord, the last time I came to you, God, I was singing the same old song. But, Lord, today I want to sing unto you a new song. Lord, I don't want old hits, God, to still be in my top five favorite songs, God. But, Lord, I want to bring something new to you, God. I don't want to say, God, that I will believe. But, God, I want to say that I do believe. Lord, I don't want to say that I know you can, God. But I want to say I know you will. Lord, I want to no longer say that you're able, God. But I want to say that it's already done, God. I know this isn't the most popular message. I know it's not the, that, that message that'll make you lose your mind in church and, and have what we call a, 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 a Holy Ghost experience. But you need to realize, as God is my witness, if you can go to God and just be honest with Him and say, God, I'm sorry for ever doubting you. God, I'm sorry for coming to you the same way over and over again, God. I'm sorry, God, for wearing my emotions on my sleeve and crying to you, God, saying, Lord, if you would have showed up. 
But Lord, I come to you today, today, God, with a smile on my face. Even in the midst of my trouble, God, I come to you with a smile on my face. Even in the midst of my tears, God, I'll still smile. Even in the midst of my hurt, God, I'll still smile. Even in the midst, God, of the drama that's in my family, God, I'll still smile, God. Lord, I got people not speaking to me, God, but I'll still smile. Lord, I got people that I feel uncomfortable being in the same room with, God, but I'll still smile. Lord, I got prayers, God, that I thought you may not have heard me, God, but I'll still smile. Because I know, God, that you're more than able, God, but that you will. And so for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to be completely quiet, but I just want you just to go to God for yourself. If you want to pray, if you want to worship, whatever.